This week on our 200th episode of CrossFeed. Republicans shrug. Religion after school. Jesus, a Muslim prophet. The right to divorce. Religion after graduating school. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. Hey, I didn't realize it's 200 episodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not entirely 200 episodes um, because there were a few in there where back when we were doing the Bible studies as the PDFs where we didn't have an episode, but we still um put out a Bible study because I was using the Bible studies um, during my Bible class. And so I had to have them ready. So there's actually, if, if anybody would ever go back and try to dig up all the episodes, there are a few missing. Um, but the, you know, the, st- the stories were still found for the week. We just didn't get together to discuss them, but ah. it's still episode number 200. So, okay. Okay. So are we going to reboot to uh, episode number one somehow? <laughs> like DC Comics? Uh, uh, DC Comics is going to reboot their entire universe to issue one. Maybe we should just you know, do a reboot of the, of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim's going to come back as a teenager. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> man, that's a scary thought. Anyway. Oh, man. That's, okay, well, with that... Thing. Speaking of teenagers, and this is graduation time, so let's talk about prayers at t- Texas grade school, or uh, Texas graduations here. All right, this is San Antonio. Um, uh, more specifically, Castroville's Medina Valley High School. And um, that now we've talked about a lot of different uh, sort of prayers at uh, gr- public school graduations and things like that. Um, but this one was kind of interesting because the uh, judge ruled that a high school graduation um, may not include an opening and closing prayer, no surprise there, or the words invocation or benediction. Also, students who are speaking at graduation can still talk about their faith or cite a belief in God as the reason for their success, but they may not say amen or God bless you or have the audience rise and bow their heads. Yes, master. Right. So I understood the part about not having a opening or closing prayer. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, invocation is calling on God to be there or, or bringing to mind his presence or something like that. Okay, fine. You know, understand that one. Uh, benediction, that was a little hazier, uh, depending how it's worded. Um, you know, literally a benediction. It's it's a blessing. It's a, literally a good word. Um, but it, you know, unless it's thank you all for coming. Um, you know, you and that's hardly a benediction. Right, right. Um, you know, it's and something, something. Bless you all. Something, something. <laughs> <laughs> Have a safe trip home. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, okay, all right, all right. I can Lots see that. Lots of luck. One. You're gonna need it with these atheists running around, <laughs> right? But I thought it was odd that the kids aren't allowed to say "Amen" or "God bless you." Um, yeah, especially the "Amen." <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just imagining, you know, these um, kids that are putting their their little speeches together. And and I could just sort of imagine them saying, you know, like, okay, um, I want to use a quote from somebody. Who can I think of that, you know, that I was, I said something and they said, amen. Or, you know, <laughs> well, I wasn't saying it. I was quoting somebody else. You know? Oh, good grief. So, oh, I'd love to be one of those kids. I'd love to be one of those kids. I had to pair them with those kids speaking. I would. I would say, and Dr. Martin Luther King once said, <laughs> God has said, <laughs> you can't say that. I can't quote Dr. King. What are you, racist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, we I all... Mean, I, I, is it just me? Is that the first thing I would pull? I would, you know... <laughs> 
Yeah, well, you know, you're a rabble rouser and a troublemaker. Not like I, I, I am. I agree. But I, <laughs> so much fun, you know. I mean, could, you, yeah, hey, I could be just as PC as this guy can be, you know. Even more so. I know the game, you know. Um, I, I mean, I think Massachusetts is a little whack job sometimes living up here. But even they don't have any, these kind of weird rules. But it's okay. It's okay to say the Pledge of Allegiance with the words under God. That's okay. <laughs> We're in trouble. I mean. You know, you, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I just don't get some of the stuff. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, um, I, I don't get this, you know, why it was offensive, why it's offensive for a student to tell, you know, at the end of it, thank you and God bless you. Why is that considered offensive? Well, given that a lot of our presidents have said that at the end of their various addresses. And now they say, God bless America. Yeah. Hi, God bless you and God bless America. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're not, you're not saying a particular, I mean, I, yesterday I was, uh, we had a member of our church who did a uh, uh, Eagle Scout award and I was asked to get the benediction at the end. And I gave it, so I had a closing prayer, remembering the people in my former hometown of Springfield who uh, lost homes and stuff due, due to the tornado, mm -hmm. remember people in Joplin, Missouri, and other things, you know, asking God's comfort upon those. Um, and at the end, ended then with a Trinitarian benediction, you know. Um, didn't even think about it. I was going to use the ironic benediction, but I was in the middle of the prayer, and I often end a prayer saying, you know, and now the Lord bless you and keep you. No, and, and now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father. You know, and um, so I ended the prayer that way. And nobody said a word to me. You know, but I, you know, as I figured, I'm a Christian pastor. Therefore, you'd ex you know, expect me to do that. I just, I don't know. I just don't get something that, you know, it's, it, you can't say God bless. Okay, I understand. Uh, please rise and bow your heads. Okay, at that point, you're asking the people to stand up and have a prayer. Right. Right, you're you're asking them to express some sort of um, faith that they may not share. Right. So, what do you want to bet? One of the kids sneezes just to hell the kids say. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> they will. I bet they will. You're just causing problems. All right. I've read about it when, when these types of things have come through, and that's that's what the kids did. <laughs> Get a fake sneeze, and the kids I mean, all shouted, God bless you. The, the word amen is simply the Hebrew word for truth. So. Yeah, but, but it has a religious context. Yeah, it does. But if the person's allowed to say this... This, you know, person or my faith, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blessed that Jesus, you know, gave me the ability to do this or something like that, you know. I'm blessed that Jesus gave me the ability to say amen and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's weird stuff if you ask me. Weird stuff. Well, it could be worse. It could be in New York. Yep. Now, I don't get this one, okay? Again, Massachusetts is a pretty secular state. But one of our churches is starting their meeting on Sundays in a middle school. And a Baptist church, five or six years ago, um, or maybe it's ten years ago, also started in the same middle school. A lot of churches, like yeah. all over the country, um, are Stop. in cool. they, yeah they start out that way and, and some of them some of them deliberately stay in them just because they um oh I was, I was listening to a church planning seminar and and they were talking about how um they deliberately stayed in there because they didn't want people f um tied down to a building and to th to sort of associate the um their their fellowship their their church um with a piece of concrete and and so they deliberately stay sort of mobile, which I thought was well, kind of interesting. But um, uh, who was who, uh, that? Uh, Rick Warren. That's that was part of their thing originally. They uh, well, they they moved around a lot. Uh, but anyway, so okay, so the New York City Board of Education 
um, had forbidden any churches to meet in to meet in schools. Um, and so there was a an injunction um, a while back, which said, "No, you cannot." You know, it, it, you know, forbade them from enforcing that. And um, they said about sixty congregations have been permitted to use school facilities after hours. It's after school; nothing else is going on. It's on weekends. Um. And uh, now a circuit appeal of a court, the Second Circuit, three-judge panel split two to three, uh, upholding the uh, school's positions and school's position. The conduct of religious worship service has the effect of placing centra- centrally and perhaps even establishing the religion in the school. Uh, circuit judges Guido Celebrisi and Pierre Laval said. With Judge John Walker dissenting. That's ridiculous. They're renting out well, the space. Correct. It's it's that's all they're doing. The only way this could be a trouble a problem is if you said only Christian groups can rent out the space. Right. If you rent it out for a, a Jewish, if you say no, it's content neutral. If you want to be a, start a mosque, a synagogue, a Christian church, or anything you want, you know, if you a Unitarian group, an atheist group. Mm-hmm. It costs you fifty bucks an hour. Right now, that's 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 how you get around it. It is not that's just, well. Not only is this ridiculous, but I think it applies. I'm hoping that the 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 the, uh, the uh, church they they have a foundation that helps us because this flies directly in the 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 the, the face of Supreme Court precedent. Right. There's, right. there's been there's there was the um, one about a, a film. There's another. Supreme Court case about a Bible study group meeting after hours. Um, the equal access uh, 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 cases that the Supreme, Supreme Court has um, passed. I, I don't see how this. I don't see how they could write that decision in in the face of decisions of the Supreme Court. Right, and um, Walker, uh, in his dissent. Um, cited a 2001 Supreme Court decision which allowed another Christian group to use the after-hours facilities of a school elsewhere in New York State for Bible study and other activities. He said after-hours use of public school premises did not undermine the government's neutrality in religious matters. Rather, he argued, preventing such use would have a chilling effect on free speech. Which it does, because other other organizations that are not religious organizations are allowed to use it. So they're saying, "Oh, we're just against religious organizations." Oh, hmm. Kind of taking a position, uh, official uh, religious position, there, aren't you? You're right. Um, and that's exactly what they got in trouble too before. I think it's going to come out. I think it's going to go to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court's going to strike it down, and then they're going to sue the school district for all their legal fees. Hmm. This is just. Man. I, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. I mean, th- there's such a precedent. Not only is there a Supreme Court precedent, but I mean, this kind of thing goes on all over the place. And nobody see. I mean, if a ch- if a church is renting out a space, right? It's not like they're leaving up banners or anything after they leave. You know, they go in, they set up, they leave, they clean up. You know, right. nobody knows they're there unless you come by. You know, during the um during the service or, you know, you see one of their flyers or whatever. And it's not like right. any, anybody sees, Oh, they're meeting there. That's not a school endorsement of the organization. Right. Um, the, um, I mean, ours has, you know, connecting point Lutheran church meeting at Marlboro middle school. And, and, you know, which I think, but I think that's a nice way of putting it meeting at. Right. Doesn't say that, the, you know, Sponsored uh, uh, by or sponsored by or anything, it's just for meeting at that building. I mean, just like before that, they said meeting at Sheraton Hotel Ballroom Number Six or whatever right. it was. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, it didn't say the Sheraton sponsoring them. You know, I mean, they, you know, it's it's a it's a very bad decision by the by the circuit court. Um, first, of course, they will appeal for an M Bank ruling, where you get. Everybody on the circuit court there to vote. I'm uh, hoping they'll strike it down because they, you know, I just don't see how in the world they can they can possibly uphold it in view of Supreme Court precedent. 
Well, and you know, and I think your hotel um, example is a really good um, example. You know, if if a group meets in a hotel, does that mean that 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 hotel is endorsing the um, you know that particular uh, organization's beliefs or, or anything like that? You know, I mean, I imagine that there's all kinds of churches that um, that have conferences at Marriotts. And Marriotts are owned and run by the Mormons, but I'll bet you they allow other groups besides just Mormons to meet there. Right. Um, well, I mean, they're not run by the Mormons. J.W. Marriott and his family are Mormon. Okay. And so it's, you know, but, but, yeah. but uh, as um, one person said at an LCMS convention for the Bible study the next day, if you didn't bring a Bible, I know you're not didn't because you're all Lutheran, just bring the one from the hotel. Those of you in the Marriott, make sure you're bringing the right one. <laughs> Is this a kissing book? <laughs> you know, so because you know, there's a, there's a copy of the Book of Mormon in every room, yep. but there's also a copy of the Bible from the Gideons in every room. Yep. And so they, you know, they allow. But again, it's content neutral. You know, uh, uh, um, and that's the important thing is just to say. You know, this is a place where, you know, you pay your 50 bucks, and so long as what you're doing is, 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 is legal and it's not going to be immoral, I mean, I guess, you know, you could say we're going to have a soft porn night here. Okay, soft porn night. Uh, that, that we don't want to to be, be. You might want to turn your microphone, your microphone off when you sneeze there. Sorry about that. Um, I did. Yeah. There, you got it off. Anyway, um, yeah, so long as it's you know fairly content neutral, there's nothing illegal or nothing immoral going on, then I can't see how you could say, no, can't have this here. Right. Now, yeah, it could get complicated when you get into questions of, um, especially as the whole uh, same-sex marriage issues come up and stuff like that, and um, where... You know, I mean, if you uh, if you say, well, you know, we're not going to allow the Ku Klux Klan, you know, because they're a racist organization. Okay, well, if that's the case, then are you going to allow a church that says the homosexuality is sin? You know, and you could get kind of nitpicky about that because people treated um, same-sex marriage as a civil rights issue. Um, so. <clears throat> It, it it could get touchy in some situations like that, but that's not the case here. And right. and even then, you know, it, it, it's one thing if it's if they're inciting violence against people, but most Christian churches that I know of that say that homosexuality is sin also say that you need to love those people and and respect them and you know and and you know give them their you know dignity and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. I like how you put that. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I'm using those, you know, technical theological terms. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good. I don't, you know, I'm just. So, what if it's a Roman Catholic Church group that says you can't have divorce, but maybe they vote in favor? That is okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just really reaching there, folks, for this one. I'm sorry. This is um, kind of bizarre. I, I never realized this. The on the island of Malta, um. Up until last weekend, divorce, divorce was, was illegal. Illegal, like apparently, completely. the The island is ninety five percent Roman Catholic, and uh, and it was uh, they they didn't want to become part of England because they wanted to keep divorce illegal. And I'm I'm not a fan of divorce. Um. And uh, so, but at the same time, I, I'm trying to imagine a culture, um, a country where divorce is completely illegal. Your spouse cheats on you, cheats on you, too bad. You know. Well, I think um, it's very. <sighs> I think it was technically illegal. But it was going on because it, the referendum asked whether the divorce should be legalized, quote, 
in the case of a married couple who has been separated or who has been living apart for at least four years, and where there is no reasonable hope of reconciliation between the spouses, whilst at the same time ensuring that adequate maintenance is guaranteed and the welfare of children is safeguarded. So I have a sneaking suspicion <clears throat> that, okay, they could not get divorced, but they're just going to not live together for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Well, and what, in the meantime, they probably each have a different spouse. I mean, there was a time in uh, you know history where Ill- divorce was basically illegal. I mean, look at the days of medieval England and uh, the medieval ages and um, uh, the Reformation. I mean, where there were very strict rules on that, and it was very, and a lot of people just had mistresses. <laughs> Yeah. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Yeah, that's true. Just fine. We just can't remarry. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, no, we, just, we just can't remarry. We'll stay married. You know, they won't all just stay married and we'll just each uh, have somebody else we live with. So, it's, I mean, you're, you're sort of, by by allowing it, since people are doing it anyway, I mean, not that people are doing it anyway is a good reason to legalize something. Um, but at the same time, if, if there's no um, sort of consequence, no, uh, you know, if if you don't make adultery a, uh, a punishable offense, then it's people are just going to find, we'll just, you know, live in adulterous relationships instead since we're not allowed to get divorced, you know. So Right. I mean it said couples that have been separated for four years. I mean, if that is not a de facto divorce, you right. tell me what is. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, even then, you know, you're you're looking at um the, at that point, yeah, they're they're divorced pretty much anyway. It's just making it legal. Um and and it's not. It's, well, I've heard the opposite. You oh, know, common law marriage. Yeah, common law. We're gonna get married. Just make it legal. Now we have a common law divorce. <laughs> so, I you know it. It's interesting, especially you know looking at our country with the growing cohabitation rate. So, um, here questions of marriage or divorce are starting to become moot. Why do you ask questions to which you already know the answer? So I, I think in a way, yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's not that either one of us I think would support divorce. I just think I should. But I should, on the other hand, I don't like the idea of being phony about it. Right. Right. You know. Exactly. And and so we're not going to have a divorce just because it's illegal. The reality is, if you have a couple that's been. Um, Divorced for, um, I mean, it has been separated for four years, four or more years. Then it's a de facto divorce. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, pretty slim chances that they're going to get back together. Put it this way: right, I'm, they have just as good a chance to get back together if they divorce as if they don't. You know, sometimes right. couples divorce and end up getting back together later. It's rare, but uh, it happens. Look at Mitch Daniels, uh, governor of Indiana. Uh, his wife divorced him, married somebody else, and then came back to him later on. Um, but, uh, but I mean, in all seriousness, are, are, how many people are going to, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they've been separated for for that long. I mean, I can just see a, a lot of couples just separating and, and hooking up with somebody else, and uh, which I think is a worse thing. So we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. As time goes on. Oh, gosh. But I wonder what Muhammad would have to say to it. <laughs> All right. So uh, <clears throat> heading down under, uh, we're a organization called, it's a Islamic group called My Peace. Uh, sort of like MySpace. <laughs> um, that has been putting up billboards that are being considered provocative and offensive um, because there's a billboard carrying the slogan, Jesus, a prophet of Islam. 
And uh, they also have put up ones that say, Holy Quran, the Final Testament, and Muhammad, Mercy to Mankind. And uh, some uh, uh, Roman Catholic bishop has been saying, oh, that's provocative and offensive. And yes. uh, at least one sign has been vandalized, too. And it says, um, um, well, the guy put it up because uh, he says um, that uh, he, uh, one, they, my piece wanted to encourage Christian and Muslims to find common ground by raising awareness that Islam believed in Jesus Christ. Um, okay, well, first of all, Bishop, I'm sorry you're offended. Get over it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm getting tired of this thing that I have a right not to be offended. Um, yeah, this is what Muslims believe. They believe Jesus is the prophet. Muslims are wrong. They have every right to be wrong. They have every right to put up what they believe. Uh, their wrong beliefs on billboards. Harold Camping had the same right. Uh, you know, just because you're an idiot or just because you're wrong doesn't mean you can't put it on a billboard. Just because I find it offensive, too bad for me. You know, I had, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a right not to be offended. Yep, get over it. Get over it. Okay, you want to get, you, you want to say that, put up your own billboards. Mm-hmm. And the billboards say, Jesus is, how about, how about putting up there, Jesus is Allah. There you go. You know. So, you know, the funny thing is, when Jesus I first... Is the, you know, Jesus is the word of Allah. You know, uh, uh, now you have, you know, which good, good, just John one, um, you know, why not put it up there? Jesus is the final word of God, not the Quran. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because when I first saw Jesus, a prophet of Islam and, and, you know, before I saw the whole article, I just saw kind of a snippet. Um, I thought it was a Christian group putting it up, trying to say to Muslims, Hey, you know, you guys have Jesus as one of your prophets. Let us tell you more about this great prophet and priest and king. <laughs> so, and by the way, I you know it says uh, that one of them is vandalized, and this bishop says uh, the can the campaign organizers. I wish you could say this in an Australian accent; it would be sound so much cooler. <laughs> uh, the campaign organizers profess to billboard ad uh, advertisements. I'll say it the British way are to inform, but in effect, they have provoked a response reflecting the evangelism we saw at the weekend. We certainly do not support evangelism, but its occurrence is a sign the advertisement, the advertisement has provoked a negative response. Um, you know what? That um, is absolutely silliness to say. You know, how about go back to the golden rule? Do to others as you'd have them do to you. The vandalism is wrong. Period. We are sorry that the evangelism took place. The vandalism took place. Period. Right. <laughs> Last week, Anglican Bishop of South Sydney, Ron, Rob Forsyth, told Fairfax it was complete nonsense to say Jesus was a prophet of Islam, but the billboard, billboards weren't offensive. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I guess that's a blunt way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how I would say it too. No, Jesus is not a prophet of Islam. We do not believe that. We know the Muslim Islam believe it, but to say this is offensive to Christians is a complete non is complete nonsense. Um, you know, that's this is what they believe. They have every right to stick up on a billboard what they believe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't cite you know in Australia with its Christian heritage, a billboard carrying the statement Jesus is a prophet of Islam is provocative and offensive to Christians. Right? Australia's heritage it was a prison colony. <laughs> so at that point it's the vandalism that is actually part of their heritage. Yeah. So you can't really say but other people Christian but, but Christians heritage. have been, you know, colonizing Australia, but still, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, um, you know, but, you know, I would say, you know, this group uh, wanting to raise awareness that Islam believes in Jesus, the Jesus you believe in and the Jesus we believe in are two very different people. Yeah, and St. Paul had something to say about even if an angel from heaven should come and preach a different gospel. Right. 
you know, years. this is a very different thing, but ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's finish this puppy off this week. I don't know why you picked this story about Anne Ron. I don't even say how you say her name. I think it's it's Ain or Ayn uh, Rand. So people yeah. probably more familiar with the book Atlas Shrugged, or at least have heard the title. Right. I mean, I don't even know that much about her. Um, I did know she was an atheist. I did know she think that Christianity was silly. But some, there's a liberal Christian group and points out that um, a lot of people like uh, Paul Ryan from Wisconsin and some other Republicans think like her stuff. I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. I have a little. So she, um, <clears throat> well, uh, her objectivist philosophy prizes individualism and regards religion as a primitive sop to the feeble-minded masses. Um, basically, the, the idea behind uh, her her writings is that, uh, you know, government works pretty well if you um, stop sort of uh, raising up the lowly and uh, just let people fend for themselves. And uh, I'm probably really oversimplifying it, and somebody who's a fan of her work is going to shoot me down, but because uh, I have to admit that I haven't read her book but um, or any of them. But... She, she was raised a secular Jew in Russia, and she decided the existence of God and the Christian idea of self-sacrifice were untenable. Right. It okay. must be either reason or faith, Rand said in a 1979 interview. I'm against God for the reason I don't want to destroy reason. You know what? This sounds very much like uh, Stephen Hawking's last week. Uh-huh. All right? Yeah, he said this idea of that when you die, you go to heaven's a fairy tale. Oh, that's not right. No. Right? Yep, absolutely. So, no. it's, it's, so yeah. uh, my, my first question, I guess I would have to ask Sap is, do you think Stephen Hawking's, then you shouldn't believe in him either? <laughs> or, or have faith that, that what he said is right, since he can't prove it. You know, I mean, that was a statement uh, uh, made based on faith, not reason. So, you know, uh, um, uh, now, SAP and the liberal Christians hope to discredit the GOP budget by driving a wedge between the conservative Christian and Tea Party wings of the Republican Party. Um, you know, I may not agree with her. Um, I don't, you know, but just because she's atheist doesn't mean she's all wrong. Right. Now, this this kind of struck a chord for me, and maybe this is the reason that I uh, picked it this week. I'm not sure. It just kind of jumped out at me. Um, I was on. Uh, I, I was looking for ways just to sort of connect with people in the community and stuff, and I was looking uh, to see what uh, sort of local community online forums are out there. And so I, I found one that's specifically for our city. And that has a moderately active, um, you know, uh, sort of discussion base. Um, not a lot of people involved, but I thought, you know, this would be a good way. And and something that caught my eye was somebody that was uh, complaining about door-to-door -door salesmen. And um, and so I, I made a comment that I said, you know, I'm a pastor at a local church, and um, <clears throat> we were, were looking for ways to help the community, and and make the community be a, a better place. And uh, we were contemplating uh, doing a little door-to-door -door surveying uh, just to get people's thoughts on it and and wondering, given that we're not selling anything, you know, how would you feel about that? Is it just a sales thing or is it, you know, a door-to-door -door thing? And the, the response was overwhelmingly negative against the door-to-door -door thing, um, even if we're not selling anything. Um but there was, I was also sort of greeted by at least one person with a certain degree of skepticism. Like, what are you trying to do? And, um, and, and somebody else said something to the effect of helping other people is a liberal idea or something like that. And this person was conservative and, and, uh, and it sort of sounded kind of like what they're talking about in this article that, um, 
you know, while all the sort of welfare and, um, you know, the government helping people out, that's all liberalism and, and stuff. And, um, and, you know, the, you know we're, we're, we're talking about where there's a need trying to help meet that need. And, you know, we're not talking about socialism or, you know, anything like that. We're not even necessarily talking about money. You know, we don't have a lot of money to give. Um, but, uh, you know, trying to help organize things or whatever to help people out in various ways. And, um, it, it was just, it, I was kind of shocked to see somebody sort of speaking out against helping people in need, you know? And, uh, and I, I understand the, you know, sort of wanting to encourage people to not just live off the government. All right. At the same time, there's people that have very legitimate sudden needs. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, all of a sudden they lost their job. It takes a little while for the unemployment to kick in while they look for another job. You know, they still have to put food on the table, you know, found other people. I mean, one time there was a guy that came by and he was just hungry. And, uh, I offered him, I had, uh, some leftover ham sandwiches from one of our recent, uh, dinners at the church. And I had some in the fridge and I said, do you want a ham sandwich? And, uh, and, and he goes with mayonnaise. And, yeah, sure. You know, and, and he was so excited and I went, wow, nobody should ever get excited about a ham sandwich with mayonnaise, you know? Um, but he was really hungry and, and he hadn't had a decent meal of, of any kind. And I, I don't think a ham sandwich is necessarily a, a really decent meal, but I mean, it was sort of what I had on hand real quick, uh, to give him. And, um, so, you know, just th the fact that there are people out there that have a legitimate need that, you know, even are, are trying to get themselves back on their feet, but, you know, just need a little help in the meantime, you know, I mean, that's very much a reality. And so, yeah, there's, there's something to be said for teach a man to fish instead of just giving him a fish. But, uh, you know, at the same time, there is a time and a place for giving a guy a fish. So, and it's, it's just, it's a matter of finding that balance. You know, Jesus fed the 5,000. He didn't, he didn't say, you know, all right, y'all go get something to eat. And that's what the disciples wanted to do. There's no way the local uh, township could have handled that quantity of people. But, um, so the, you know, there's a time for helping people out when they, when they need something and, uh, whether it's, and so when you, you know, I mean, exactly where you draw the lines, when you start talking about, uh, state or federal budgets, you know, that's another issue entirely. That's where it gets really complicated. <laughs> that's why I'm not a politician or an economist. Um, but, uh, you know, those are, those are hard Hard decisions have to be made, and uh, and I don't, um, I, I don't envy that job. I have one job on this lousy ship. But as Christians, we do need to look out for each other, and we need to look out for not just other Christians, but um, you know everybody. Yep. Yeah, I just, uh, but I, I just look at the article. The article struck me as this guy's been pretty cynical. You know, he's not really doing it to bring it a discussion of who she is, but simply to drive a wedge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they do quote Chuck Colson, and uh, he did on one of his Breakpoint commentaries, which I I, I listen to. I don't always agree with him, but um, but I think they're interesting, and he's uh, got some good insights. Um, he did uh, not too long ago. Uh, he did one of those on Ayn Rand. If you go to uh, breakpoint.org, you can and just uh, uh, search on the name. Uh, you should be able to find it, and his transcripts are are available there, so you don't even have to, um, you know, download the MP3 or anything to listen to it. But he has some good points to make. Well, I think um, you know, I, I kind of like this, that the one person is. is uh... Uh, J. Richards, Catholic and author of Money, Greed, and God, with Capitalism Solution, Not the Problem, calls Ryan, like many Rand admirers, a cafeteria Randian. 
I suspect progressive Christians are confusing that point. You can agree with Rand's critique of collectivism as uh, enervating and soul-destroying without adhering to her overarching philosophy. Right. Um, but, you know, see, that's, 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 that's a real um, key thought right there is that, um, number one, is that, you know, you, you, Americans tend to be very eclectic mm-hmm. and take what somebody they like and reject some other things. And then it ends with this interesting uh, article by Ann Heller, who uh, was a biographer of uh, Ayn Rand, and says, um, Certainly you can believe the state can't do everything for everybody, but if you're a practicing Christian, you also believe it is our duty to take care of the least among us, she said. And we know perfectly well from history that churches and individuals can't do that job alone. Um, strange, for years that's exactly who did it. <laughs> Yeah, it is. That, and that, that caught my attention, now, too. The, 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 uh, uh, um, <clears throat> the Roman, uh, the, the, the Rome could care less about the hurting and the needy. The church was the one who reached out and took care of them. And a lot of Romans couldn't figure out why they did that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, Rome, you look at, at Roman society and, and re- you look at sort of the, um, secularism at its core and, and sort of taking uh concepts like um oh what's the expression I'm looking for um you know sort of survival of the fittest natural selection you know that was the that was a, a sort of central part of Roman culture you know um similar to you know, you want a modern example, you look at um, India uh, with their concept of karma. Well, if you're poor, it's because you did something bad in a previous life. You know, you deserve it. And which is why when the Christians come along and help out the, um, oh, what are they, the Dalits, is it? The, um, yeah, you know, and they're I just like, both India. yeah, they're going, what are you guys doing? You know, you're not right. supposed to help them. So, yeah. And the other thing they need, he, they, they really should know is that, you know, if you're going to truly be a, 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 a Randian, then you're really more a libertarian than a Tea Party. Uh, and, and to say the Tea Party people buy into her, uh, that's a very diverse lot there in the Tea Party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really you is. Know? You know, it's, it's, it's an oversimplification for a lot of that stuff. Uh, but uh, they, uh, you know, this is, oh, but that's, but that's of course how you, you know, make your point. You oversimplify things, you know, and uh, which isn't a good thing to do. Right. But we got no more mail this week. Nobody likes us apparently. Nope. Everybody hates us. Guess we'll go eat worms. So, yeah, something like that. But anyway, it is good to. Um, share with you if you do have any comments on it on us uh especially if we have any ayn rand people if somebody could tell us how to say to pronounce her name correctly <laughs> be nice uh let us know at podcast at crossfeednews.com yep or if you're watching this on youtube or one of the other uh video sharing sites you can just post a comment right there and we'll get it so oh and also uh given this is our 200th episode i'll put out a plea again we do this every once in a while um if you're uh, if you get the podcast or you're watching this uh go to the itunes podcast directory uh but either the video or the um audio f- feeds are both on there and we would love it love it love it if you would post a review um they are few and far between i think one of them has a like two reviews one. yeah preferably yeah <laughs> but honest is good um yeah, uh, and uh, you know we've got we've got no reviews on on one of them and like two on the other one I think or something like that. So um, yeah, we'd love it if you would just you know just pause right now, go to the iTunes podcast directory, just search on Crossfeed News, and uh, and then post a review there. So we'd appreciate it. That's true. God watch over, be with, and bless all of you now, today, 
And uh, thank you for sticking with us through all this time. Good night, everybody. God bless.